Hey everybody, Rob here. It's time for a couple of pro revenge stories. First one, dream job, nightmare boss. Let's jump right in. Please hit that subscribe button because I'm not a robot. So after finishing a design program, I quit my temp job in financial services and started to focus on design. A couple friends were at a small events company that also had their own TV show, a video game, and lifestyle TV show, and they needed someone to help out on the show and do some of the other design work around the studio so that they could focus on pre-production. Sounded amazing. So I went into their offices, sat with them for a chat, and started the same day. At first, all was good, helped out on the show while banging out shitty bread and butter design work for the studio. The two guys were recent grads, but seemed to have a grasp on what was going on. The boss seemed okay. He would make weird jokes about them being gay together. They weren't. But I just ignored it, as it seemed like the kind of jokey relationship they had. After a short time, he started getting frustrated with them and felt they weren't doing a good job organizing the show. He asked me to get a coffee with him, let's call him Drake, and kind of probed my background. I went to film school, worked as a camera assist, and DOP for a while before switching my focus to motion design and 3D. This set off a light bulb in his head, and within the next two weeks, he fired those two guys and had me doing pre-production on the show. I brought in a friend to help produce and everything kind of went forward. I worked on the show for about a year and a half. The show itself was fun. I got flown to E3, PAX, and pretty much every major local gaming and cosplay expo. Worked with a bunch of famous cosplayers and minor expo celebrities and had a great time doing it. But during all this, I saw Drake slowly push me the way he had my previous two colleagues making gay jokes about me and the producer, inappropriate comments about our personal lives, angry outbursts for no real reason, the inability to reason or compromise, and later saw how dodgy the business was. Getting quotes from suppliers and then, in the middle of the project, calling and demanding they lower their quote or not be paid, making behind-the-scenes deals with sponsors of the show, to take marketing budgets put into the show, but then split the money with the marketing manager who made the deal, taking prizes that were intended as giveaways for the show, and just selling the product on eBay to line his pockets. All the while, I figured, I've been here a while, I see him burn people every day, but surely it won't happen to me. He owes me more than that. I'm making this show for him, did the title sequence, the graphics package, secured sponsors, organized social media, shot the show, edited, mastered, and delivered. Oh, how wrong I was. Things started getting worse. A bunch of big events were happening, and in addition to the show, I had to help out with the events work. I was burnt out, but had a trip coming up, so had to stick it out until it was all paid for and over. I had already decided I was going to leave for my trip and not return to the company. In the weeks before my leave, the major event happened, and during the event, something with some location audio went wrong. It didn't really have anything to do with me, but he grabbed me by the collar and told me if I didn't fix it, he would kill me. That was my woe moment. This guy is actually a sociopath. I figured... I needed to take some precautions to protect myself, as I still had a week until I'd be leaving, and then I was out. I started by packing all of my gear at the studio and getting it out of there. Each day, I'd stay back late and pack as much as I could. By this point, the whole show was operating on my equipment, my camera, my lenses, my sound equipment, my raids, my software licenses. So... I got that all out. I then backed up every piece of correspondence I had from him, all my invoice emails, any requests in writing, any receipts, etc. I got my last invoice in and let him know that I was off and would see him when I got back. Again, no plans of going back, but best to keep that from him until my invoices were paid out. On the day of my flight, he called me five or six times asking about footage from the major event, 
it was all stored on my drive, but wasn't scheduled to be cut down until well after my return. This was an insurance policy. Technically, I signed no contract with him, so I owned that footage. I called him and said, it's not scheduled to be cut down yet, but it's on the server, knowing he wouldn't know how to check that anyway. A week into my trip, I sent an email asking why my invoices hadn't been paid yet. I had asked that they be prioritized given my holiday, and he agreed. I was met with an email from the troll he hired as an events coordinator, but really, she was just the receptionist with a fancy title. She stated that there was a police investigation ongoing, as I had clearly robbed the office before leaving. All of the equipment was missing, drives, footage erased from the server, not true, etc. She included a police event number and said if I didn't return all equipment and pay the company $5,000, that they would be pressing charges against me. I laughed and fired back, all of the missing equipment is mine, but I'm happy to look over any receipts they have for it. I immediately called the police and gave the officer the event number and asked what was going on. She explained that a woman, the office troll, came in and made claims that I had stolen from the business but had no evidence and was advised she would need to provide proof, but never returned to do so. I told her about them demanding I pay them $5,000 or they'd press charges and she took a statement from me in case it went further as this was a clear case of extortion. I just wanted out and they were willing to go to these lengths to me out of the money I earned, killing myself for them. I was pissed off to say the least, and I knew enough about their business to destroy them. Step 1. Immediately sent my unpaid invoices to a collections agency. They straight away fired off a letter of demand, which informed Drake of my desire to seek the unpaid invoices, as well as legal costs, should it come to that, via the legal system. Get all of those backed up emails together that prove I was working on the days I invoice them, and since my invoices are itemized by project, those emails should match with the specific projects I was working on. Step 2. Start hitting him where it hurts. For starters, their only software licenses were mine. Prior to my arrival, they were operating entirely on pirated software. I didn't touch any of their software while doing work for them. 3D was handled on my own machines. We started doing post in Creative Cloud and left their pirated FCP licenses alone. So aside from uninstalling my own software and plugins from their machines, everything was back to the way it was before I left. So I reported his company to the BSA, the Software Alliance, and was surprised in that I heard back immediately. He was running five or so edit suites with pirated copies of Creative Suite, FCP, Microsoft Office, Maya, 3DS Max, etc. A lot of expensive software. The guy who emailed me back asked if he could call me and basically told me that they often have no way of knowing if a company is using pirated software, so they really rely on tips such as mine to go after companies. I forwarded him emails where I had advised Drake that we needed a specific piece of software and the cost involved and his response where he would CC me in and ask the IT guy to pirate the software. This was pretty much all they needed to fully implicate him. He then asked me to let them know how many computers were in the office and I provided him with a map of their office with locations for each computer and the server and a list of all software on each machine. Really easy to get this as I still had access to their servers and could remote into each computer. Step 3. Discredit the business. I put out some business reviews on Google so that people would know what kind of shady operator he is. I filed a copyright claim against their showreel since the entire reel was made up of projects I did for them and I never signed over those rights. I commandeered a web player service they were using to host and monetize the TV show and removed each episode and deleted the account. I took over their Twitter page and posted info about how the company would rip off clients. I emailed a couple of major game expos who he had partnered with for both the events and TV show 
and let them know about how he would regularly have me alter footage to make it appear as though he was delivering on contractual obligations, comp in twitch.tv logos to make it seem like he was live streaming events, ad banners where there weren't any, etc. Minor things, but things these companies were paying him to do. I updated the About Me section of their website to display a not safe for work link. Now, I still had a friend working there, so was informed of every reaction. Every time he shouted my name in anger, I knew about it. The BSA fined him over $60,000. When he heard the news, he threw his iPhone against the glass wall in his office smashing it. I received a very nice reward for turning him in. He held out on paying my invoices until the very end, sending threatening emails the whole time and demanding that I pay him money for the trouble I've put him through. I went to court. I didn't need to attend. I won the entirety of my invoices as well as the cost of taking him to court. So he paid for me to sue him. That year was the last year for the show likely had trouble getting sponsors after I emailed all of them about the way he was selling prizes on eBay and sent them a link to his eBay store page. He also no longer had involvement in some of the major gaming expos he'd previously done events work for. Those two losses would have cost him a few hundred grand a year. The page on the website was up for months. When he found it, he again smashed his phone. This time though, he didn't have a glass wall to break as he had to move out of the very nice office with water views to a small shitty office in a strip mall. I think he was having financial difficulties. It was on this night that he drunkenly called me and threatened to kill me. I celebrated his call by deleting all the footage I had taken of that major event. The budget for the event was over a million dollars and a lot of that footage was the only proof he had that he'd done the event. Five camera operators footage, crane footage, drone footage of the venue, all recorded sound from mics, all gone. Knowing he'd never be able to get that back was great. Plus, his threatening phone call, along with the extortion attempts that were on file, were enough to get a restraining order put out against him. And I cannot wait until he inevitably f***s up and tries to do something again. Now, do you guys think the secretary went and did that on her own without any authorization? Because it kind of sounds like that. I love how OP just tore apart their company piece by piece until there was absolutely nothing left. On to our next story, sending trucks to the wrong state to screw over a staff sergeant. Let's jump right in. So back when I was in my first unit, we had to ship all of our seven tons off to get up armored. That meant that over a year or so, we shipped them all from South Carolina to Wisconsin. I was in charge of logistics at the time, so I coordinated it all and loaded the trucks. Overall, a pretty easy task. The only challenge was the documentation. Anyways, it was all going well until this new staff sergeant showed up in the motor pool. He was an asshole, just treated everyone like shit. He made my life miserable when I tried to ship these trucks. Like I didn't want to, it wasn't overly fun. Sometimes it even required me to work on weekends, so I would have been happy just not doing it. However, I had to, HQMC ordered it, so there was no reason for him to be pissy with me. Anyways, so once he took over, shipping these trucks became a pain in the ass because he would want to micromanage because I was a lower rank. So I let him and he wanted to sign shit. So I made up lines for him to sign. So finally I had it with him. One day I decided since he wanted to sign and be important, I would f*** him up. So when my next big shipment, like four trucks, came along, I decided that instead of sending them to Wisconsin like they were supposed to go, I would send them somewhere else. I decided 29 Palms, California would be a great location. So I changed some codes on the sheets, gave them to the prick staff sergeant who made more dick comments and signed blindly. So off we ship these trucks. Well, a couple weeks later the call comes in that our trucks never arrived. So the command starts getting worried that a few trucks had gone missing. They come to our shop 
and we just informed them that this staff sergeant had taken charge of all the shipments lately. So they go to him, and he proudly said he had taken over, but crumbled when they asked him where the trucks were. It took them a couple of weeks, but finally a call from 29 Palms came into our command that they had these trucks show up, but nobody had claimed them. The command flipped their shit. As far as they were concerned, this stupid f***ing staff sergeant got involved in shit he didn't need to get involved in, and sent four big ass trucks across the country instead of where they needed to be. He got told to leave the logistics to the logistics department, and I had the whole thing solved in an hour. Have you ever noticed how most of the military revenge stories include a healthy dose of malicious compliance? Definitely the truth in this one. I'd like to thank both OPs for posting their stories to the Pro Revenge subreddit. You can visit them at the links in the description below. Please go there and give them an upvote. Once again, this is Rob from Karma Comment Chameleon saying thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and share it with your friends. And we'll see you in the next one.